My name is Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. Tonight's story has the title, Laughter as a Boy. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. Tonight's presentation, the field of plastic surgery. The object in point, a black card, a white feather. The case in point, John Coslow. He's eight years old, and for reasons that will appear obvious, he's already made up his mind that he's lived too long. Whatever hope for the future he might have rests in the hands of six people. Five of them the boy has never met before. The sixth, John's older brother, Pete Coslow. Pete is 16 years old. He's in his sophomore year of high school. He has one main interest in life, his brother. Supper ready. Who do you think you are anyway? You got no business in these yards. You're liable to get killed. Come on. Look like you've been through a coal mine. Give. Just listen to me for a change. I keep telling you. What do you care what those other kids call you? Other side. More. Sticks and stones, that's all. Don't pay any attention to them. Forget it, will ya? Uncle Al's got supper already. Bought you something anyway. New trick. But you can't even work it. Well, don't just stand there. Come on. Saturday morning. Got scrambled eggs for you. Yeah, good. How'd it go at work today? Okay. Mm -hmm. Same. Uh, punch the clocks, make the rounds. What's different for night watchmen? Same thing all the time. Did you find out about it for me? Find out about what? The nurse at the school. Did you talk to her? Oh, yeah. She called me on telephone. What'd she say? 
Well, she told me name a place to go. She say, maybe they do something for Jono. Maybe not. She don't know. Where's the place? In my jacket. Room 200, University Medical Center. Monday at 10 o'clock. She think they could help him? I don't think so. Well, it's worth a chance. Anything's worth a chance. Oh, it's no good, Pete. I, I can feed you and pay the rent of the doctors, hospitals. No, no, it's no good, Pete. The boss down at the market said that I could work full time this summer. I could save up. It's no good. John is John over. Leave him alone. There are lots of kids like him. You go live your life. Uh, oh, what's the difference? He's my brother. That's the difference. Two days later, in spite of fears and warnings, Pete Coslow undertook to destroy the wall which closed his brother off from the rest of the world. A wall built of deformity, shame, and the ridicule of the ignorant. A wall which, if allowed to stand, could imprison eight-year-old John Coslow for as long as he lived. So you're from Iowa? Back where the tall corn grows, huh? Yes, sir. I lived out here most of my life. John just came out a couple months ago. Mm-hmm. He lived on the farm back in Iowa with Grandpa. When Grandpa died, why, he moved out here with me and Uncle Al. He's our guardian. I see. Both, um, parents dead, huh? Yes, sir. Happened just after Jono was born. They were in an accident. Uh-huh. Tell me, uh, John, do you catch a lot of colds? Sore throats? Earaches? Yes, sir. All right, now. Open your mouth. Open it wide. Wider. That's fine. Pete, did anyone ever mention to you that your brother has a cleft palate? Yes, sir. After Mom and Dad died, the relatives talked about sending him to a doctor, but I guess they thought it would be too expensive. Just let it go, I guess. One more thing, John. Now listen carefully. Repeat after me this sentence. Crazy old Kenneth kicked the colored kitchen kettle. Okay? That's all there is to it, fellas. No strain, no pain. Do you think there's anything you can do for him? I think so. John, would you like to have me operate on you if it would help you to speak better? Yes, sir. Do you think that'd do it? I mean, do you think that'd fix him up? Well, not completely. An operation would give John new machinery to speak with. It doesn't end there. It'd be up to you, John, to learn how to use this new machinery. Be kind of like uh, getting a bike for Christmas. Now, that bike wouldn't do you much good unless you learn how to ride it, would it? Understand? When would you be able to operate, Doctor? Probably uh, two or three weeks. I'd have to get written permission from your uncle before I could operate. I have him get in touch with our office, would you, Pete? I'll tell him to call. Right now, I'd like to have the other doctors and our staff examine your brother. Okay, John? Hmm? Just a moment here. What's the matter? Well, I, 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 I thought I'd examine that ear pretty carefully. I. <laughs> the second member of the cleft palate team, the speech therapist. The pre-surgery interview includes a test for oral pressure, a detailed sampling of Jono's speech patterns. 
After the dentist, the pediatric section, where the patient's general health is the main concern. Yeah, nice fellow. Go to sleep now. Now here, as you can see, is a diagram of a normal mouth. Normally, the soft palate, by means of a muscular action, acts as a kind of valve opening and closing like this. So that when we utter the sound k, the palate is closed. When we utter the sounds n or n, the palate is open. Now here, <coughs> excuse me, we have a cross section of a cleft palate. It is not possible for the person to divide the nasal and oral cavities to block that nose off from the mouth so that sound uttered circulates through both of them and is lost or distorted. Dr. Rayburn, isn't a cleft lip usually associated with a cleft palate? Yes, usually it is. However, in the case of the uh, Coslow boy, the lip is not involved. Now, <clears throat> surgically, we can correct this defect in the following manner by transposing four adjacent sections of tissue over the opening or cleft, thus affecting a closure. He's all right. Nothing to worry about. Took the anesthesia very well. It turned out all right, huh, Doctor? Well, as uh, far as I'm concerned, it did, Mr. Coslow. He did just fine. I, I don't know what to say. I mean, you take care of John, oh, you, you give your time. You don't even know us. I mean, well, how can I thank you? Well, he's a, he's a fine lad, Mr. Coslow. I'm only glad we're in a position to help. There's still work to do, though. Or for John, I mean. Oh. See, we've taken the lad part way. Now he's got to go ahead on his own. Work, study. He's got his new bike for Christmas. Now he's got to learn how to ride it. You think he'll be okay, though? I mean, he won't have people laughing and staring at him all the time. Pete, we've had ignorant people around with us for a long time. There's nothing you can do but ignore them. The patient is ready for discharge. The doctor is satisfied that the closure of the cleft in the palate is permanent. The first step is completed. Jono has started his trip to join the rest of the world. In the initial weeks, the speech therapist points for two main objectives. To help the patient harness the basis of speech, the airstream. To direct it out through the mouth not through the nose. Second, help the patient make the greatest possible use of the soft palate muscles and the soft palate itself, the all-important valve, the doorway of sound. Practice, exercise, work. At home, at the clinic, palate training, breath direction, articulation. Practice, more practice. Five months of rigorous training. Then in early September, the patient develops the danger signs, discouragement, boredom. The treatment is immediate. Jono is given a day off. At home that night, it's a different matter. The lesson takes place on schedule. The next morning, the same, no let up. Okay. 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 The sound's still coming through your nose. What's the matter with you? You're not even trying. I had enough practice. You haven't had enough practice. For your own good, can't you see that? Can't you get it through your thick head? It's ten after eight. Come on, you can't be late for school. Not the first day, anyway.
quit looking so scared. You've been here enough. First day of school, nothing to be scared about. You pass. You teacher. Don't like it. Get worried. Listen, just forget about it, will you? Remember what the doctor said. When you talk, you gotta take it easy. You get nervous, you get upset, you get tied up in a knot. Okay? I'll come back at noontime and have lunch with you. See you later. Now, here are the names of the three class monitors I happen to choose for my list of students. Now, when your name is called, will you please stand up so the rest of the class can become acquainted with you? First, Fred Tyler. All right, Fred, thank you. The next is John Coslow. John Coslow? Is there a John Coslow in this class, please? Are you John Coslow? All right, John. John, I see by your card that you were transferred from a school in another state last year. Would you care to tell the class where that was, John? Would you care to tell us, John? All right, John. You may sit down. John. I must apologize for my class. They have shown the worst manners possible. I hope it will never happen again. I told you to start practicing the lesson. It's nothing. What do you mean it's nothing? I'm getting sick and tired of the way you've been acting the past few days. Well, I'm tired of you. At least you've been mad at me. Look, you think I like it? You think I like staying here practicing with you? You think it's fun? You think I like it? No, I'm 
What do you mean you're not going to practice? I say you are going to practice. Now give me that junk and get over there and start reading. I will not. Fine. I, I said give it to me. Now give it here. Come on. Hello? Oh, hi, Red. Yeah, same deal, my brother. Yeah, it's a rough deal. Uh-huh. Well, maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. anymore, John. I'll never again. We it at home, huh? Let's ride the bus. I'll pay. P? Why will A? Might as well do some practicing. It's up to you. You're the boss. I'm not going to pee before I earn. No anything? Just told you. Christmas? You think I could earn, but you think I could learn by Christmas? Anytime you say. It's up to you. Christmas time. Bye, Christmas time. You, you want to start nothing, Pete? I'm beginning. To journal. You learned how to write it. It's yours, Dr. Rayburn.